Do you want your online store to be ultra-fast, fully customized to your needs, and scalable to more than 1 billion items? iMeos is an ultra-fast PHP e-commerce framework. iMeos, next level e-commerce. Try it now. If you're running an application at scale in public or private clouds, you have to tame almost boundless complexity. Datadog brings together all this observability data with infrastructure metrics, traces, and logs in one integrated platform. Phonage is a cloud communication platform that lets you integrate voice, video, and messaging into your applications. We have a load of helper libraries, including a Laravel package and a client library for PHP. You can find out more about us at developer.nexmo.com. Let's begin this. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about how to create a brand design for your project that doesn't suck. So did you ever try to design a logo and ended up with something like this? Yeah, it's not that bad. Maybe it's a bit outdated. Uh, it's better to toss it. Maybe it's time to call your friend that can do some design. But I mean design a logo can be that hard oh right sorry so hi there i'm Kaneko. i'm a full stack developer from portugal working at medicare the portuguese version and ideally i work with these file extensions pretty much the normal case of any web developer but i also love to design stuff so i'm pretty familiar with those kind and i mostly do logos uh, i for the community of Laravel, I started with the Laravel Zero logo from Nuno Maduro and that led up to the making the logo for PHP Insights and for PEST. And last year I had this great idea, I must say. Why instead of fixing the, some readmes during the, the festival, why not design a logo for open source projects? So I made a post and I must say that there was some demand or maybe a bit more, yeah, quite a bunch. Uh, by the end of the month, there was 30 logos. Short mat was uh, one logo each day. It was rough, to be honest, but it was an awesome month. And that turned into the opportunity to rebrand the North Mid South and Happy Dev logos. And recently, Marcel also asked me to make the app icons for both apps, Twink Tinkerwell and Hello. But enough about me, you are here to learn about brand design. Uh, so you may ask, what's branding? But maybe it's easier to ask what it's not branding. So branding it's not a logo a logo is just a symbol for the brand okay but just a symbol it's not a name uh, a name is just a word so what is branding after all so according to wikipedia a brand is the name term design symbol or any other feature uh, okay sorry you're not coming here to hear a dissertation so long story short a brand, it's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling that your audience have about your product, your service, your company. It's pretty much 
everything combined it's the result of the thing and can be the reputation of your company uh, take for instance you have Laravel and you can just throw it different colors and you have the same opinion uh, either you like it or not but for branding what to brand your product what we will need after all so you need a name obviously because people need a name to refer to your product and you need a logo because having something visual visually will always help the the audience and this might be a little bit tricky to understand but yeah, I, I like to see like a brand it's like a person it needs to have character so your brand needs to have its own identity but let's break it down let's start about the name uh, naming is hard to be honest did you ever try to name one of your kids I'm, I'm trying here so continue on what is a good name after all so Google uh, Google it's one of the most known brands in the world and it, its name it's actually a mix spell of the word Google and view it's one of the most famous uh, front-end uh, frameworks and its name comes from a, a translation of view uh, according to Evan French was a better option and I don't know if you know it, but uh, Laravel, the name was inspired by one of the castles of the Narnia books. Uh, in this case, Caid Paravel. Uh, according to Taylor, it rhymes with it rhymes better. So let's well, moving on. Uh, okay, so you can see that maybe it's not that hard. Uh, where should we start? Uh, but you can use a name generator if you want to be quick uh, so there's some out there like NameQL that you can just type a, a keyword from your product and it generates somehow related words that you might like or not there's also NameWink that has the same approach but has a tiny difference that uh, it shows also not only the words but the the words with available domains so it might might help you decide which one that you prefer to but even with those approaches of quick solutions you might want to create your own so to have in, in sort of an idea these are the most common trends when people create brands so there's baby words something that your toddler might make you can also add a dot, uh, adopting the the dot uh, as part of your name. And one good example of that is then ping me and landing jobs. You can also drop a vowel because who cares about an extra e in your word? Uh, or instead, you can do the opposite and add an extra letter uh, to your name. Um, you, as you can see previously, saw previously, you can misspell your word, uh, or you can blend words together. Like um, these two examples are very keen that you have two separate words and them together create a new one, like Beyond Code and Laracast. Or you can use a translated word. You already saw view, but I don't know if you know it, but spati means space in Dutch. But if your project is uh, somehow framework related, you might just want to prefix the framework in the name, might be easier for you, or whatever. You can call it Mojito, click Sushi, that's actually a cool name, and we won't criticize you. Moving on, about a logo. So how to draw a logo? You, a name might be easy, because you just need to think about it but to draw might be a little bit hard so I'm going just to show you with two tiny steps how to draw a logo so you just try start by drawing some circles and then you do the rest of the logo 
sorry guys I'm just trying to be funny uh, for real now you need to first initially just choose your tools uh, using paper is always quick for sketching um, and digitally uh, you must use what you feel more comfortable for me it's uh, illustrator and photoshop uh, but you can use wh whatever tools that you want um, but this is pretty much the, the, the same approach that I took in every level so I pretty much uh, sketch some t on paper because it's easy to work with and to erase and to scribble and then I'm moving on to vectorize the vectorization part with this, with this I mean is to transform the, the picture draw in paper and put it in, in vectors in uh, digital form in your computer then also important and sometimes forgotten it's to properly export your vector into a per pixel perfect image but we will see later that in a demo that I was going to show you then uh, either it's a pencil, a digital pencil, or a, a real pencil, you should start to your logo with just pure black and white. Why? Because it makes you focus on the actual logo and it will simplify your design because you have more, you will see right away the elements of, the, of your logo and eventually you will need a black and white version somehow. So at least you will already have that in your pocket and when you see any logo in black and white you see the contrast and the balance of the elements the true meaning of them and if it looks good in black and white i'm pretty sure that if you add any color in them it would feel also cool and fresh the next tip that I have for you guys is to research how, how others solve the same problem. I mean not to copy the idea, but some logos can be hard to find a good design solution. And getting that inspiration might turn the knob and make you feel more comfortable and have that light bulb, light bulb moment. Let's just have a quick use case, uh, taking, for example, the Happy Dev logo. So just by looking for Happy Dev, uh, Happy logo, I mean, uh, you can see that most of the logos solve the problem by adding a smile or an happy emotion to the logo. So let's just type it, Happy Dev. And I don't know if you remember old school emojis, but back in the day just uh, an emoji was just a colon and a capital letter and you have uh, an emoji not like the ones that we have at, in, in our time that uh, move in and have all sort of animations so with that we just solved the problem i guess to add like sort 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 something sort of of a happy feeling in there but adding some bold in the second letter might help to split the words and even to emphasize a little bit better to break them put it one on top of the other and just by correcting the alignment we can see better the emoji part then it's always more tweaking more refinement and we try different fonts to choose which one looks better and we have our logo done but in this case what about color uh, what color could make you feel like more happy and since we have like an, emo an, an emoji in there why not yellow because it feels right right I guess moving on so you might ask me task text or shape or do you mean logo type or logo mark that's the official terms it depends. It depends on your style. It may depends on the project. It may depends on what you want to transmit. But take by example Laravel. This is the full logo, and they have the logo mark, and they have the logo type. Uh, and one example is Patsy. Uh, we can may say that they have just logo, but if you tweak a little bit the background, you see that they also have a logo type. 
that they can use somehow on their branding. Uh, Laracast, for example, has its own logo mark, and it's a funny case because the logo mark is embedded in the logo. Quite the opposite, the North Meet South logo has <laughs> its own logo and its own separate logo mark. And yet a big different example, it's the No Plan to Merge logo because they have everything on their logo. Props. Very dope. So, let's try to live design a logo for you. So, let's try really quick to try to live design the logo of Demping. Uh, I don't know if you know the platform. The platform is this one. is uh, an application that uh, monitors your task schedule of your Laravel applications. It's being built by Jake Bennett and Michael Lurinda. And they gracefully asked me once again to redesign their logo. Their current logo is like this one uh, and it, as you can see they are using the trend of adding the dot in the name so the name is actually the domain name uh, and for redesigning i already choose two fonts uh, between two fonts and normally for the fonts i just use the, the font book of macbook uh, that has a similar approach as a Google Form, so you can type here a word and you can easily see uh, how it feels to use that font for your brand. So I'm using, I'm a little bit an ease with between these two. Um, this one is a little bit more joyful, and this one is a little bit more tech and more CLI ish that might work with the brand. Uh, let's just try with the joyful first. Uh, let's just try to, one thing, one tip for you, just instead of working always in the same element it's vectors so duplicate thing and try your your experiment with another one and you can see that uh, separate the words won't work maybe close them together and yeah, might work save that for later uh, but one thing that i'm liking it's that dot in there so i might just want to work with it um, I'm just going to create an outline in there. And since we have an I in the name, just put it a little bit shorter and just grab that the ball from the, the dot and just put it in there. So we can properly have the connection between uh, that dot and the other one. So you already have a connection, with, uh, a funny connection in your logo. Another thing that I'm not particularly keen is that having that and a little bit with the same uh, width as the other. So I might just reduce a little bit that guy and open up so it can feels more natural. Might need to tweak a little bit in, in the future, but for the moment it's enough. And it actually feels like a logo. Uh, we can try something else really quick just to have the proper feeling if this is the right approach. So using the same approach as uh, uh, the happy dev logo, so breaking the words, but that dot in there doesn't feel right, so trying to break in this way. And some of you uh, might just, uh, that that me, since it doesn't have the same width, uh, you look at it and oh, I, I might just put in bigger, right? But in that case, you are making that the me work is more important than the others. And it, it isn't the case. So as you can see, it's actually not an easy way to work with it. Maybe just save it for later, but it might not be our best move. Just to be sure, just grab the other font and just have the same treatment as the other. So create an outline, just put the, the eye a little bit shorter and just duplicate the, the dot in there just to have the same approach, something like that. You just need to align the thing. And yeah, it could work, but yeah, to be honest, I really like this approach. One thing that I wanted to try, because design is like this, it's like experiments, 
So having there the, the dot and having as the main branding element, I wanted to make like sort of a grid of dots. Because for me dots, I'm thinking of like if they are blinking, they are noticing you that it's working and when they're not, then it's not working. It's pretty much like the same approach of the switches or the routers that you have on a, on a rack. So let's just put it in the dot a little bit bigger. Okay, I will work with that. And just having a, a grid of dots in there. So just properly align the set. I just make one extra. So remove it, align it, and now just duplicate the thing. Put it on groups, drop it, drop it, drop it. So we can have like this sort. So we can have like a grid in there of dots. So looking at this is like the grid that can ping you when something is not right. So if you can just, uh, I, I told you to work with black and white, and in this case, to in, I might what I'm trying to find in there it might even work. So you can even still work on the grayscale part. So let's just try to maybe maybe this work. Just try to put a little bit grayer. And you can see right away a P in there. Like reference to then P as the name. And if we drop in there the 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 logo type it might work feel right and just put it a little bit shorter so so it feels more connected and this actually will work properly both on both vertically and then horizontally because that that thing is important because you don't know right away where you are going to put your logo either it's be on a, uh, on a card or on your site uh, so it's very important to have different ways to um, reorganize your logo and you can see like this could be fun even to make like a sort of uh, an animation like a snake just try to fill in the, um, the dots as in gray or having this one blinking like pinging you and this might be a good solution for the thing and I might be happy. So it needs a little bit more work. But one one last thing, let's we'll just try to add some color just to have the feeling of this as a natural logo. So just duplicate the thing. And logos in this case, since the, the service itself is more to inform you, not it can be used to alert you that something didn't go right. But since it's more to inform you, uh, hopefully, uh, the normal color for information is blue. Instead of when something is not working and I want to alert you, it's more red. So in this case, I'm more keen to use blue. And for using colors, I'm really f uh, a big fan of the Tailwind set of colors done by Steve Schubert. He has a, a good color palette. And since we are looking for blue, just let's try with this one. And having there, just properly colorize the thing as blue. And we need like a secondary color because just one color might be feel a little bit, a little bit dull. Um, what sort of color? We need to emphasize the dots in there. So it's one of the biggest thing. So maybe just a teal because it's very close to the the, the, the blue color. Maybe just a, a pinch of teal in there, uh, the, the two dots, as maybe that could be a little bit uh, hard to read. Maybe uh, a, a darker teal. Yeah, but that will work. Yeah, it looks fine, nice. Maybe let's try with a different color. Maybe try with the pink. It's pink, I think. Pink is good. Might, might work. Yeah, it gives a little bit more punctuation to the logo. And we might just keep on trying to a different set of colors. Maybe uh, having the uh, yellow won't work. 
uh, even red you can try it red because sometimes it, it wants to alert you maybe it won't break yeah feels good and then you have a set of colors then you can colorize this guy you have like grabbing the blues from steve so you just grab all this and break the thing grabbing that that guys that guys the blue and that goes to the side of there and then maybe a lighter blue in the center or if we want just to grab the the pink in there and let me just grab the exit there's enough of the thing and just paint it yeah that would, would could work it all, always need a little bit more care a little bit more refinement but as you can see it's really quick just to get the feeling of um, having a, a logo in there and trying to create something on your own with just plain fonts and just tweaking a little bit of the shapes of the thing and you have already uh, something to work and to present i just wanted to show you a quick tip because in vector you can tweak and to scale the thing really as, as much as you like it's really important to properly export the, the image some of you may just export the thing uh, from illustrator from here but vectors are known as to have half pixels and in, normally there aren't are half pixels so it's always better to copy the, the thing and go to your Photoshop and then just create a new document. Yeah, so something like this, just having a little bit more space to work with. Yeah. And I normally paste it as a shape layer, paste it, and as you can see, your vector is all uncorrected. So this is what I call to make something pixel perfect. So you just scale the logo where you want and then you need to tweak these tiny borders to properly set up the shape of your logo so we, when you will export the the logo it actually feels sharper to the eye instead of this having these half pixels painted as with a little bit of opacity so it's a little it's a little bit dull as well to properly fix all these guys to correct on the pr proper pixel but uh, believe me at the end it, it makes the difference when you are sporting, exporting and using your rasterization version of your logo. Back to the slides. Creating an identity uh, takes time so don't push it and I don't know if you noticed it but those colors the, that ribbon those dots aren't they familiar they speak tailwind brand and it's impressive how just a small design aspect aspect it speaks the brand itself so let's see that sort of approach with other examples right you have already know the, the north meets out logo right but you know the hosts they are michael Zorinda and jake bennett so I tried to put them in the logo. So I blended that, the picture that you saw previously in the logo. So it take part of, as the logo, the photo takes part of the design. And with them, I can use uh, also their hometown to make it feel more connected to them. And I can always make something funny out of the gate um, and for as for their logo mark uh, since it's a compass i can do some sort of animations so it, it, it has it, its own identity as well and for example happy dev since it's i don't know if you know it but happy dev is a podcast about mental health so it wants to promote happiness so better to use our it uses a lot of the happy color yellow color and pushes the idea of the emoji just to propel that feeling also since it's to promote the happiness to developers why not having little code snippets 
that uh, are easy for a developer to read and to promote that feeling of uh, happiness and good feelings. What about swag? What's the number one swag item that any developer loves it? Stickers. Everyone loves stickers. I still remember when Taylor just put it, Laravel stickers on the table on last Laracon EU and this was pretty much the table moments after. So developers love them and they it's fairly common to sticker bomb any MacBook you can see here from Sarah's MacBook and because they are easy to make and cheap to buy just uh, for example just go to sticker mode and just upload your logo prove the result and you have stickers and it's a good way to share your brand among developers and it's fun another good swag material it's t-shirts because everyone wears t-shirts and i'm pretty sure that it's the number one wear choice for developers and if you think about it it's like having a walking billboard of your brand crossing the world and where to make it it actually depends it depends where you want to sell it depends on your country but if it's online you can see one of these marketplaces it's, it's pretty much like sticker mule just upload your art choose the design and start selling and more stuff that you can do so you can make socks you can make hats you can make leggings you can make christmas ornaments you can make golf balls just let your imagination flow about promoting promoting your brand it might be hard because there's too many logos out there too many brands and how the the user could spot your brand so it's better to know your audience um, there are some quick wins for the most common ones i i guess for github and twitter um, so for twitter posts i strongly say to people to instead of just typing what you want to say using text why not just adding an image because people are more keen to see the picture and, and then afterwards read the text and since you're using the brand you're you want to use your brand why not just using the same colors the same trend just to emphasize the the, the post and to be easier for the the user that is scrolling to know that it's one of your posts you also have the github social previews that this is a little bit forgotten uh, i guess because when you share your github project normally on twitter or on any, any social network you see it like this but with just a smiley a small tweak you can add a proper cover image for your project and make it more pronounceable and this is really easy to set up just go to your github set project settings and just add an image on a social preview you can also try to make something viral <laughs> i believe that you noticed this on twitter a lot of People using this uh, avatar style it's being done by my buddy Jack McDade and uh, when he started to promote his radical design course and when they sp someone spotted the the, ava the the avatars of the people on the testimonial section people went crazy and asked demanding him to have their own version but to be honest this is very hard to achieve because the internet is very unpredictable so have that in mind to wrap it up the best piece of advice that i have for you is just try to be yourself if you're trying to make yourself a logo and your own brand if it feels good for you go for it and if you have any any questions for me just ping me on twitter and i will gladly reply to them so thanks for watching and I see you next time. Do you want your online store to be ultra fast, fully customized to your needs and scalable to more than 1 billion items? iMeos is an ultra-fast PHP e-commerce framework. iMeos, next level e-commerce. Try it now.
If you're running an application at scale in public or private clouds, you have to tame almost boundless complexity. Datadog brings together all this observability data with infrastructure metrics, traces, and logs in one integrated platform. Phonage is a cloud communication platform that lets you integrate voice, video, and messaging into your applications. We have a load of helper libraries, including a Laravel package and a client library for PHP. You can find out more about us at developer.nexmo.com. Yeah.